Everybody, it's Daryl back again, DFishman76. We got a project we're working on today, and I got some information to tell y'all at the end about some stuff that we got going on. Uh, some new stuff that's happening for our family, and some stuff that I've, well, I've been keeping it from you. So, uh, as you can see in the background, this is our new project we got working on. I'll give you a few seconds and let y'all guess uh, what it's going to be. Uh, leave it in the comments below what you think we're gonna be making out of this. Uh, while y'all writing that down, I will tell y'all the big news that we've got. I start February 22nd on a new job. It's a job that's, uh, I'm getting away from the trucking industry. I'm actually working for a power and water company uh, in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Uh, I'll be doing some service stuff for them. This is a upgrade in the job that I originally had. Uh, I have been driving a truck for a local uh, family owned commercial farm. Uh, it's called Prestige Farms. That company has been really, really good to me. And I'm not leaving because it's been a bad job or anything like that. Uh, I'm tired of getting up at 3.50 in the morning and with this job that we're fixing to take on, we'll actually be uh, working with the public again. Uh, I don't know if any of y'all, well, some of y'all might know, I used to do electrical work for a living, and uh, I kind of enjoyed that, and we're gonna kind of get back on uh, getting back into working for the public and stuff. So with this job we got now, we're gonna be able to start doing some more stuff. I'll be able to start putting out more content with Prestige Farms, we were not supposed to have hogs or any kind of poultry. Uh, of course, some of us did, and some of them do. Uh, of course, we always followed our biosecurity stuff. I never wore my clothes that I had around any of my livestock to work. Uh, I wouldn't even stop by and check on my animals on the way home from work till I got home and change my shoes and stuff because I didn't want to cross contaminate anything. Uh, of course, we had a few chickens. When all this pandemic stuff started, uh, we actually picked up a few hogs and uh, some chickens and stuff. We hatched all that stuff out. I would have loved to have done videos on it, but I couldn't because in theory, I weren't supposed to. A couple people that I've talked to out at Prestige they said it's kind of a gray area and that it'd have been, you know, they won't fire you over anything else, but uh, I didn't want to press the issue and uh, I didn't want a few videos in, make me end up losing a job that was providing for my family. Uh, Prestige Farm was good to me. When Wyatt was sick, they pretty much told me, don't worry about anything, take care of your little boy. And uh, when you come back to work, we'll figure it out. So, but, uh, this right here was an old cotton trailer that we've had for probably 15 years at least. We're gonna turn it into a mobile laying coop. Uh, the videos that we're gonna put out on this is gonna be a several part series, but uh, I've got to take all this stuff off of here. I'm probably gonna take the platform off and uh, see what's up under it and see if we can use part of the steel on here to actually uh, be the base for the, the start of the chicken coop. So I'm gonna give y'all a little walk around of what we got, what we're starting from, so y'all kinda know what our baseline is. You could pick these trailers up right here for probably in this condition for less than a thousand dollars, if you can find them. Uh, I have seen them with just the uh, axles and the, that little bar right there for uh, 300 bucks. Uh, so, I might end up shortening that, I don't know. I might leave it the length that it is and uh, just have room to grow. We're gonna start out slow here on the farm and uh, this right here will give us room to grow with our layers if we're able to uh, sell the eggs that we produce. So uh, let's do a little walk around right quick. So of course you can tell all the tires are flat. That rim is bent, something kind of bad and we're missing a lug nut. Uh, I'm gonna go around all these tires and uh, spray all the lug nuts with PB Blaster 
and see if we can't get them straightened out. I got to find us a rim. If I can find four rims, we'll just change all the rims out on it uh, and go from there. But as you can see, the bed itself does not look bad. I know you can't really tell it because it's covered in straw, but the, the bed is made out of metal. And then up under here, we have metal slats that go across. And then we have two main eye beams. I won't really know the condition of those eye beams until I get the uh, the metal off the top of it. But as you can see, it's got a pivot and axle up front that will actually do almost the 360 under there. It won't quite go all the way around. And then the back axle solid. So, but you can see there's rust under here. I might get the sandblaster out and sandblast this. I might sandblast that stuff and take it down to a color. I got to get it with Hope and find out what kind of color she wants to do for the farm. But uh, we'll just have to wait to see. The wind is blowing, so I'm trying to stay up under here. I think when I got out of the truck a while ago, it was kind of spitting snow a little bit. But uh, this is the front of it where you hook up to it. It's just a regular old pin, which is fine for what we're going to be using it for. Uh, I got to take the... Uh, the rims off. I'm gonna repack all these bearings. I'm gonna get some, just some used tires to go on here because we don't really need a whole lot. And then I got to get all this scrap metal out. But uh, for the most part, let me get on back around here to wind the blowing. For the most part, there ain't a whole lot of bolts holding it on. There's a one little place on the other side, one of those uh, rings they welded a pipe on it, which I think this might be welded on there too. But I won't know until I get in here, but I'm gonna take a grinder and cut all this stuff up and the manageable pieces. And then we're gonna take it all off and uh, send it to the scrap yard. And what I don't, can't use, we'll go for scrap and what I can reuse or use on this, we're gonna save. So uh, we're fixing to get started on taking this off stick around alrighty so here's a little update I got this side off I'm cutting it up in little pieces that are manageable the only reason why I ain't filming that or videoing this is uh I mean I'm just cutting stuff up with a grinder where's my grinder at? I'm using that cut off wheel a real thin cut off wheel to uh cut these pieces off in manageable sizes so I can get them off uh, I don't really think there's anything on these panels that I can use. I might be able to use that piece for something, but I'm not sure. But we're going to haul, well, my aunt's going to haul all this stuff off of scrap. Uh, so that's a little update on how things are going so far. So good. All right, so here's what we got done for today. As you can see, Everything has been removed off the top. We even got all the scrap metal hauled off. I think Rhonda said she got $80 some dollars for the scrap off the top of this thing. So that was good. She's gonna add that to her backhoe phone. <clears throat> we got a backhoe that everybody pretty much uses and if it needs any maintenance or anything like that, uh, that's what that money I go to. But uh, I sprayed all of the bolts on the rims and stuff. <clears throat> I got up here and got to looking a while ago, but you can't see it now because the sun we ain't got a whole lot of light. But uh, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna end up doing is probably shortening this thing a little bit. It's just literally pull a carter pin, uh, pull a couple uh, uh, pins out, and then take that metal rod that's in the middle there and uh, drill two new holes in it. We'll cut it down drill two new holes in it the length you want it and put it all back together so i'll probably reduce this down and fix it where we got enough room in there for maybe a hundred chickens uh i've got another guy that's out towards smithfield that's got one of these it's just the brim or the uh, axles and the uh metal rod in the middle <clears throat> i'm gonna get up with him he don't want that much for it and if i can take it apart and put it on my little trailer and bring it home in three pieces and i'll probably get that 
and uh, save it. That way, if I want to build another one of these, I can, and I'll have the stuff to do it because these axles are, or these hay trailers are getting few and far between. And most of the time, if you can find them, they want a thousand to fifteen, eighteen hundred dollars for them, and I can get this one for a whole lot cheaper than that. So I might get up with him and get it and bring it over here. It took me probably two hours to do what I did today, and I ran through maybe four or five cutoff blades. Here's the guy on the moped again. It's 37 degrees out here and raining, and this poor guy's on a moped. But uh, that's what we've got done today. It didn't really take all that long to do that. Uh, it was a whole lot quicker than what I thought it was. Now I've got to figure out what I'm gonna do as far as the floor-wise. I can cut <clears throat> this metal in two as far as the flooring goes and shrink it up along with the uh, the uh, length of the trailer and weld it back together. But I got to figure out what I'm gonna do for the flooring. I might get the expanded metal stuff and put on for the flooring. That way I can still get in there and walk around if I want to. Uh, and I might try to save the metal outside edges of this thing. If not, I'll just do it all in wood. That's one of them things I won't really know what we're gonna do until I take that other uh, metal flooring off the middle of it. Cause I know that that's not gonna work for a chicken tractor cause there's no way for the poop to fall through. And I'm not trying to get in there and clean this thing out every week. So that's just an update on everything we did today. There that is. Uh, Went a while ago and fed the hogs and the cows in the rain and the chickens and the quail. Even though it's raining, when you got livestock, you still got to feed them. That's the thing about working where I worked at before. Uh, it didn't matter what the weather was, we still had to go to work. And uh, we had to look after the animals because uh, they have to eat every day. So there that is. We got lots of decisions to make, but I might try to come back over here tomorrow, which will be Saturday, and see if I can uh, get that top off of there and see what we need to do. But I do know I'm gonna take this thing all the way down to the frame. I'll probably either take a wire brush on my grinder and clean everything up and prime it and paint it. That way it'll last a very long time. Or I might get the sandblaster out and sandblast it. I hadn't decided what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna repack the bearings on the axles and get them where they're good to go. I want to be able to try to be able to get this thing where I can pull it with my four-wheeler. If not, uh, my father-in-law's given me a little small Kubota tractor. I think it's a 20-some horsepower. We'll, we'll pull it with it. So, but that's an update on that. Hope y'all doing good. Hope y'all staying dry. We're supposed to get rain for the next seven to nine days, I think. Uh, so we won't be working on the cow shoulder anytime soon. I'm so ready to get that thing ready to get a top on it. Once we get a top on it, I can go over there and do some stuff. But as of right now, can't do anything. So thanks for watching. If y'all are new to the channel, please uh, hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. Uh, as far as our bees go, can't do anything with them. We had two warm days this week and it got around 60 some degrees and I was busy both days so I didn't get a chance to uh, do anything with the bees. If the weather's warm where you're at and you're able to get in your bees and you got double stacked hives in February, it's probably not a bad idea to reverse your boxes. That means take the top box and put it on the bottom and put the bottom box on the top because chances are this early in the year, they're probably in the top box anyway. And that way, uh, they're not all jumbled up in the top of the box and it gives them room to move up once things start blooming. Uh, I cut a red maple down the other day and it had little uh, uh, blooms on it. Not blooms, but uh, whatever you call them, the little red things coming up on them. So it won't be long. The red maples will be blooming here in uh, North Carolina in zone eight. Uh, I would say probably in the next two to three weeks. 
So that'll be one of the first major nectar sources for our bees here in North Carolina. So if it's warm enough where you can get in your bees, if nothing else, just pop the boxes and move them around. Uh, you ain't got to go through them or anything else. You can just change them out. And if I get another warm afternoon, once I get this other job, I'm gonna come home and try to reverse a whole bunch of boxes. Not reverse them, but switch them over and uh, get the bees room to move up or store honey above the brood. That's the reason why you do that. So hope y'all doing good. Like I said, hope y'all have a good weekend. And as always, we'll see y'all on the next one.